Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined by, by Susie. Susie is from the UK. So I'm actually doing a podcast recording in the morning, which is quite unusual for me because normally in the afternoon we've got a lot of American guests on. Uh, so it's a, de- it's a delight to be doing a podcast in the morning. Welcome to the show, Susie. Thank you for, for coming on, uh, on, Thank on the you. show. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. So we're going to do this slightly different to some of the podcasts uh, that we've been doing, um, just because I like doing different stuff. And because, you know, I asked uh, Susie a, a, a couple of questions and we got into something and uh, I thought it would actually be more fun to have this conversation in, uh, in, in public. So um, before we do that, could you introduce yourself to the guests sorry no you're the guest can you introduce yourself to the listener Susie um Susie I'm an adoptive mum to two sisters who came to us um four years apart they were both babies when um we met them and I'm creator and editor of we made a wish which is an adoption digital adoption magazine um sharing experiences of adoption generally in the UK but there are some American contributors as well about adoption in general um and everybody's experience of it yeah so um, I asked you why, why you uh, were up for a conversation and you said, because I'm trying to figure this stuff out. I'm trying to figure the whole adoption stuff out. And it, I guess it looks pretty scary when we're trying yeah. to, everything looks pretty scary when we're trying to figure it out. Um, so I asked you the question, what is it that you want for your, for, for, for your girls? What, so what is it? What, what do you want for them? What's what's the ultimate aim that you have? My aim is for them to grow up knowing that they're adopted, but it's not a, a big, it is a big thing, but it's not a big thing for them. It's part of who they are. It's part of their history, but it's it doesn't dictate who they become. Um, it's just part of who they are, just as um, a birth child. Um, it's not a, a thing that's going to dictate how their life progresses yeah I want them to understand it embrace it if they want to ask questions but it not be a big thing that's going to hold them back um yeah Yeah. and are are you concerned that it will hold them back no what I my concern is that and we were talking about this a little bit before about putting pressure on myself as a as an adoptive parent and I know that that's something that a lot of adoptive parents do is getting it right it, the the level of support that we give and how we help our children to understand what's gone on in their past um and it feels like if that's wrong from the start that could then impact how they go through the life understanding the history um and what we talked about whether as adoptive parents we put too much pressure on that and too much pressure on thinking um it is you know it's like the elephant in the room that we're talking about too much perhaps we do talk about it too much and it's getting the the balance right and learning how to do that um yeah Yeah. so ultimately if you could sum it up in one word or two words what is it that you want for your kids to be happy to be happy yeah okay cool and just grow up being happy and un- they're obviously not going to grow up every single day being happy but just being happy in themselves and who happy they are themselves. yeah okay so uh as i said we're going to do something a little bit different so where do you think happiness comes from that's a good question. Um, from within yourself, from your surroundings. Um, I think it starts within yourself um, and how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the world that you live in. Yeah. So. Uh, so I guess really I want to give them the tools to be able to be happy in themselves, you know, with the whole selves, with the whole life, understanding everything, understanding, you know, their cousins who they're 
know through being adopted um, and how that relationship is and how all of the family fits in, but just be happy with that, um, that it's not, I keep saying it's not a big thing because it is a big thing, but not feeling that it is, just feeling that that's my family. Some people are birth family, some people are not, but they're my family and that's that's it. That's the, the start and the beginning yeah. and end of it really. Yeah. So I think that the, the, the main thing for me around all this area is absolute clarity. Yeah. Absolute clarity. Um, and when we've talked about, I've been asking questions um, and we've been talking about happiness, we've been talking about what you want and um, identity and story. And for me, all this stuff was really, really, um, all really unclear. Mm. It was really unclear. So if I go back, 12 years ago I kind of thought that happiness was a, I kind of thought it was an uh, an inside job like you related like you're talking about but on the other hand I also thought that it, it would come through business mm -hmm. so I thought that once I got to a certain point then I would be feeling secure and I would be okay uh so I hit this target, uh, a big business target that I had, or big for me, mm -hmm. with like, give my little business five staff, and it didn't make me happy. It didn't stop me uh, It didn't stop me worrying about the future. Yeah. And around that time, I also found out that that um, the teddy bear that I'd had uh, uh, from being a kid was from my birth mother and that released some unhappiness in the yeah. form of anger right yeah. so this sent me off um this uh, this sent set me off down this route which eventually led to the podcast today right mm -hmm. so I'm going to talk about two things today number one happiness and number two identity mm -hmm. so uh, either happiness is an inside job or it's an outside job or it's a bit of both yeah what what's your take on on that i think it probably is a bit of both um and i think probably they influence each other so if if everything around you isn't happy um, or doesn't make you happy, then that's going to have an impact on how you feel, I think, from the inside. Because I think however positive you are as a person, if everything else around you is down, it's difficult to stay happy and positive. Yeah. Um, so I think it is a, a mixture of the two. OK. Have you read, uh, have you read a book called uh, Victor, uh, his, his guy called um, Victor Frankel? And his no. book is called um, uh, In Search of Meaning. So he, he's, he, he, he was a Holocaust survivor. Right. Uh, and he, he came through it. He, he, he survived it. And mm -hmm. not, uh, clearly not everybody else, else did. Um, but he, he managed to somehow, he saw something bigger. And it's called in, in it's called in, in 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 search of meaning is the book very worth uh, worthwhile read. Mm -hmm. it, 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 the 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 truth right. The, the truth of things is that they're always true. So we're doing this on um, we're doing this on um, uh, video. We're recording this on video. I've, I've got mm -hmm. I'm holding a pen. If I drop the pen, what's going to happen? It'll fall. It'll fall, right? Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Within this gravitational field that we're in, mm -hmm. uh, the, the truth is always the truth is always true. So if I drop this pen, it's going to, it's going to fall, right? Yeah. Um, the truth about happiness is it's always an inside job. 
it, it, it only works like gravity. It only works with the one. It only works one way. But we're not brought up on that belief. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way that I talk about this stuff is, or that, I, that I've talked about this stuff because the easiest stuff I've seen it myself is that we're, we're, we're bombarded by people trying to sell us stuff. And they know that we are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. So they, the answer is, buy this and you'll be happy. Uh, yeah. you, you're unhappy. Uh, you're unhappy because you're missing this iPhone, Ferrari, watch, pen, Mm. It, I, 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 we're, we're bombarded by a world that thinks that happiness comes to that's that selling is a message that happiness come from, comes from outside uh, uh, outsiders um the other one that i the other metaphor i use on this is uh the weather mm -hmm. so we're from not too from your accent we're not too far away from each other i would say yeah. within about 60 miles i would guess mm -hmm. uh the northeast of england you're a bit further north than me uh and you still live a little bit uh, around that area i don't so i'm not going to pry on yeah. people's uh geography yeah. so uh, well here down in down in uh, weatherby we have we have something called uh, miserable weather have you heard that have, have yeah. you heard of miserable weather mm -hmm. so how, how does miserable weather actually i there's a lady at the uh, the swimming pool that um, believes in it. She, I say to her, how I, when I go in and go for a swim, I say to this lady uh, who sits on the counter, "How are you doing today?" And she says, "As good as the weather." Right. So I'm wondering, how does that actually work? So we go outside. We haven't got an umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, the rain lands on our head. The water drops on our head. It goes, it goes round our head, uh, in, into our ear. It enters uh, in, into our ear. It mm -hmm. goes onto it, the water. Somehow gets onto our brain and it sends a signal down to our heart that we should be miserable because of yeah. that. How, how does that work? I mean, we can look out. We can doesn't. It doesn't even. We don't even have to be. We don't have to be um, outside doing it you know we can just look out we can look out of the and i know i've done this look out of the um uh, the, the window and say oh that's miserable weather yeah so uh, we, we're raised on this idea yeah that the weather causes our mood that there is a thing as miserable weather mm -hmm. have you ever been have you ever been sad in the sunshine Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been happy in the rain? Yes. Because <laughs> it, yeah. it, it's only, it, it's only, and it, it, it's an inside job. Yeah. Our feelings only ever come from our thoughts. Yeah. Our feelings only ever come from our thoughts. So um, getting absolute clarity on that it, it is... Um, my number one way yeah my number it's kind of my number one yeah yeah one of two ways because if you want your kids to be happy mm -hmm. um then they need to know that too yeah so the more deeper the the more deeply that you can see the fact that things are inside job yeah the better able you're going to be able to share that with your kids so mm -hmm. if you like do you speak any do you speak any foreign languages i used to used to I'm yeah a bit rusty yeah you used to be spanish bit, yeah. bit, bit, bit of spanish yeah so the the if if you went uh, back to spain i'm sure it would come back to you and yeah. um if you went on like like a language course in uh, uh you know you started reading some uh, started listening to some Spanish stuff on the news. You started doing, uh, taking a Spanish course on an app or watching something on YouTube. Then your Spanish is going to get better. Yeah. And, and 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 the the better your Spanish, if you wanted your kids to learn Spanish, yeah. you would need to become more proficient. Uh, right yeah. at the moment, you, yeah. you you trying to teach them Spanish would be a non-starter. 
Yeah, it would be but it would be better. It would be yeah, better yeah. than me trying to speak them, to teach them Spanish because mm -hmm. I only know hola, que tal, yes. dos a besa, man, <laughs> uh, mañana. Um, I'm, and I'm, and the next word is coming into my French, is, in, into my in, into my head is actually Italian. So you know, I I, yeah. I would be a complete dead loss. Mm. So the more the clearer that you can be on where feel, your feelings come from, the mm -hmm. better able you're going to be able to be to to teach that to your kids. Yeah, yeah, right? that makes sense. That makes sense. But yeah. I, I heard if they're teaching um, this, is, I'm going going from Spain to France, right? So to be a to be but it isn't just that it isn't just about that your own skills so um the french i heard this and it's incredible i heard this story about 30 years ago so if you want to be a french ski instructor all you have to be able to do is to ski mm -hmm. you have to be able to ski a downhill route and you have to ski it within 10 percent of what the this is this is a, a while ago you don't have to mm -hmm. ski it within 10 percent of the time of a world champion Right. right so but that that's to be a teacher mm -hmm. so but that you know so why would you have a uh, a skiing criteria rather than a teaching criteria it makes no yeah. sense whatsoever so it's not only what it's not only what you know it's your ability to share that information with your kids yeah. so you yeah. need to develop two, two things Number one, an understanding of of where um, where where your feelings come from. Yeah. Um, and then, and number two would be a uh, an ability, um, a skill to teach that to your kids. Mm -hmm. So can, that's what I've been doing the last seven years. Before I moved into the adoption space, I was going around at, uh, primary schools. Um, around um, Leeds, Leeds, York, Harrogate, Weatherby, near where I live, mm -hmm. helping kids understand where their feelings come from, yeah, and, and helping them understand if this is. And I must say, they cottoned onto this stuff a lot quicker than I did mm -hmm. when I was learning it, and a lot yeah. quicker than I do when I'm having the conversation as adults, right? So if you if you want your kids to be happy, number one. You gotta learn where where and where where happiness comes from, and then you've got to learn how you're going to share that with your kids. Yeah, kids, yeah. So yeah. that's the happiness thing. Um, and the 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 things that that but the natural thing that people go from that from from that learning is they say, okay, so um, so I need to if I'm feeling sad, then I need to learn how to change that sadness into happiness and mm -hmm. we become um and that, that's a kind of a logical place to go from from what i just said yeah um, but i don't know have you ever tried changing your thoughts yes yeah we're trying to change in your feelings yes yes yeah how successful have you been thoughts are easier than feelings i think oh, um, okay. yeah I, I, I haven't I, I haven't found those very things very easy either. And mm. the lucky the funny thing is kids find it very easy to do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 They've got they've got less they've got less going on in their they've got less going on in their heads. They've got less uh, yeah. Well for them it's just kind of that's it and they get over it. it, you know. This yeah. is the whole thing. People talk about resilience. But kids are far more resilient than adults. Oh, definitely, yeah. So they bounce back. Mm. You've seen that. I, I um, you know, the you've seen one of those moments. Maybe you've experienced it, where one of the girls has fallen over. You said it was two girls. Yeah. 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 Um, one of the girls has fallen over, and she's not being particularly bothered. But then she's seen your reaction. Yeah. You, yeah has that happened to you yeah yeah and that makes her then think oh perhaps perhaps i need to cry or get upset um when i wasn't really going to in the first yeah. place yeah. um well yeah that's it because what they what they're doing is they're picking up on that they're taking on your conditioning yeah and that's what we do that's mm. what all kids do yeah they they're like sponges 
mm. they they pick up they pick up the good stuff and they pick up the bad stuff from us mm -hmm. which is why how we are is the big biggest determinant of how yeah, they are yeah, definitely, definitely. so the fact that you've come on and agreed to have this conversation with me to, to explore all this that's brilliant because you're learning how to be, you know, what Gandhi would say, you know, we want to be the change that we want to see in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So brilliant. Brilliant. How's this go? How's this? How's this for you? I, oh, I, I'm good. loving it. I, yeah. I, yeah. I'm no, great. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the natural thing to do is, is to try and change the, uh, the uh, change, uh, change our feelings. Um, so one of the biggest, this, that area was one of my biggest uh, entrees into this, mm -hmm. this thing because I saw a, a guy and a, and a woman um, talking about this stuff and the fact that most of us, so this is, a, if you want to check them out, listeners, this is a guy called uh, Richard Wilkins and a guy, uh, one called uh, Liz Ivory, Elizabeth Ivory. They're, they're, um, uh, their partners in life and in a, I guess you would call it business, social enterprise, something uh, called the Ministry of Inspiration. If you want to check those out, um, mm -hmm. they, I, I, they were the one of the instrumental, instrumental duo in my learning. Right, most of the time, we're not choosing what we do, yeah, how we feel what we think or how we see ourselves mm -hmm. none of us are no, yeah. nobody so you know um i wouldn't get impatient on my way in in a traffic jam on the way to 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 the, to, to the swimming pool would i i wouldn't choose mm -hmm. to be like that no you would not no. so if i'm not choosing then as liz's book is called um, it's called it's not your fault it's, it's not my fault mm -hmm. it, it, it's not my fault it, it, it's some part of you know what the psychologists would call conditioning mm -hmm. yeah what a conditioning it's not our fault um we're not to blame so we're off the hook yeah i've spent uh, 10 solid days exploring that. Right. So this, is right. a, this is a depth thing. Yeah. This is yeah. It's not a, it's not a nice idea thing. It's not a, mm -hmm. this is some, this is a, this is just between a, an intellectual understanding and embodied knowledge, you know? So it's something that is the difference between abstract theory and real life. Yeah. So that I've spent 10 days with, with Richard and Liz, something like this, and, and she was coaching me for like every week. I mean, you could you could call it therapy if you want, but you know, it's, there's there, there's a co coaches for me always about looking forward, and therapists are about rooting around in your yeah. thoughts and your feelings, and yeah. that's going back. And I've always been a look forward guy rather than a look back guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you know, I, I've been studying this for like yeah, twelve years. So, but I, you know, it, it we're not choosing most of we're not choosing how we feel most of the time. Um, and if we're not choosing, we're not at fault. So we're kind of off the hook. So if we're not choosing how we feel, uh, it's only some conditioning. It's something from the past. It you know something has triggered an old memory, as people say. People use this word trigger. Um, the natural, you know. So in, so instead of trying to change, so I used to worry about worrying. Yeah. And yeah, then, so I thought, well, why, why, am, why, why have I worried? I'm, I'm worried. Now I've been on some courses, and I can't change my worrying. So now I've got to worry about my worrying. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you. You, you. you sounded like that was something that. Had, yeah, I worry about worrying and I just worry, basically. Um, 
about a lot of things um and it it can it, my husband's kind of very much straight down the line and he would when I'm like worrying about something that really I've got absolutely no control over he's like what's he's just wasting your energy what is the point there's nothing you can do about it um how does that make you feel like I should be able then to just switch it off and not yeah, worry yeah. If it doesn't work. so when people tell that sort of stuff to me I I'm thinking I can see I I completely get your logic yeah but can but you please just get off my like case that. Yeah, because all you all all that happens to me when I when that happens to me, to me is then that puts another layer of um, sh one t on the case, you know. Yeah, puts another layer of worrying. Yeah, because you can't so then, then share. How you're so, I, about it. so I started off not being worried about worrying, mm -hmm. and I started worrying about worrying, and then I started really beating myself up about worrying because I couldn't stop the worrying. Yeah. And then I don't know what happened after that, but it was another layer on it as well. Mm -hmm. another, another layer on it. And I guess that's kind of what I've learned. Um, so I worry less about worrying these days. Yeah. But I'm still wide awake at five o'clock in the morning thinking, how am I going to change the world? Mm -hmm. so, do you know what I mean? I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not immune to this stuff. Yeah. Um, the, the big thing is that for me is that there's, there's something more important than our psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, we're not born with a lot of, we're not, a lot, we're not born with a lot of, a lot of stuff on our mind. So how can we be something that we're born without? Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. And me being obsessed with my thoughts and my feelings actually just takes me further down. It just takes me th further down the uh, traumatic, dark yeah. hole mm -hmm. that goes nowhere. Yeah. And my, so... My focus is, you know, like I put a post on um, social this morning. Uh, let's be, let's let's be trauma informed, but hope obsessed. Yeah, yeah. What does that does that mean? Any does that mean anything to you? It means um, you're aware of the trauma that's there, but it doesn't have to influence how things go forward yeah yeah um i think we've become trauma obsessed yeah and i, th I think from an, an adoptive parent's point of view i'm very aware of what the trauma that my children endured when they were when they were young um and they will in time learn about that if they want to um but it doesn't mean that it's inevitable then that that's going to have a negative impact on their future I think so I think it depends on how they they're not they, they aren't their trauma are they sorry we are not our trauma no no absolutely not but if we become trauma obsessed we go further and further into the belief that we are our trauma I'm yeah. trying to uh, what I'm trying to get to here is is a separation between um us yeah and our thoughts yeah so we're taking our thoughts less seriously mm -hmm. the um the voice in our head becomes uh an opinion that we no longer value yeah so where i've been is i've spent a lot of trying to i've spent a lot of time trying to silence the voice in my head mm -hmm. yeah so i'm worrying and therefore i'm worrying about worrying and then I'm trying to silence the worry. Yeah. I'm trying to silence thing. Now, you've heard the have you heard the phrase, what we resist persists? You heard that? No, I don't think I have actually. What we what we resist persists. What we focus on gets bigger. Mm -hmm. What we worry about gets bigger. It can do. 
Um, it's like, you know, we'll put a magnifying glass. If I ask you to, if if I ask you to list all the things that were going wrong in your life right now, mm. um, which I'm not going to, then you, you, then you, you, your your attention is going to be Just on, focus on them. Uh, you're going to intention your intention is going to be on what's wrong, and, yeah. and you know, and I'm speaking as a guy for a lot of the experience of this because I focused a lot on what was wrong rather yeah. than enjoying what's right. So what we resist persists, as, as they say. And that's kind of a nice little phrase, but um, we've become the, the, the world will. I, like I, I've spoken to some highly gifted uh, adoptee therapists, and all they want to do is talk about the trauma. And I'm mm. saying, no, we're, but we're not our trauma, are we? Mm. I say to them, what's the most important thing that people should know. There's an, a, an interview in the podcast with Joe Salt, right? He's one of the leading lights on this. In the, doctor, in the adoption world um so and i was having a conversation for him and i said so what do you want to know what do you think you want to share and he he talked about for about 20 25 minutes about trauma i said joe is there any hope he said yes of course there's hope i said okay let's start recording now then he yeah. wanted to talk to me about the trauma for 20 25 minutes well i'm an adoptee i know i know yeah. what that's all about yeah i don't want to be i don't want to be i want to be hope obsessed not trauma yeah. obsessed yeah what we focus and we are you know we you've kind of like you've agreed with me we we are not our trauma adoptees are not our trauma because we're not our thinking so we 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 need to as adults we're so obsessed with the with the voice in our head we're so identified with it we think the voice in our head has got a valid opinion Mm -hmm. we think that it's true we think that um or we think that we're going mad I think we're going mad because we're listening to it so the gap the, the the difference is in and 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 this is kind of the essence of my work really is to separate our sense of who we are from the from the thoughts in our head yeah is, is this making well to what extent is this making sense i mean because i i could be way over here right i i'm, I'm no, very it, it does make sense it makes a lot of sense yeah because it i think a lot of um my concerns and and everything else about my children and how they're going to grow up are probably not their concerns they're not at the moment certainly they're not interested in any of that information they just they just want to get on with their lives and and be kids and I think a lot of it is that me learning not to think about take it well for me to take their lead rather than thinking well at at this point should be introducing this bit of information um that's not really bothering them um it's just learning how to do that I suppose um but what you said makes a lot of sense yeah I'm worried that it's too theoretical because we're all looking for the hows, yeah? Yeah. I've, I've not really given you any hows yet, have I? No. No. Well, there is only one how. Yeah. It's seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've got this idea uh, that it's all about the how. Mm-hmm. We're raised on that idea. We're educated. We're brought up in this area that it's all about the how. We're, we're educated. So before I was talking, uh, before we started recording, I was talking to you like it's like it's a chemistry experiment or it's a physics experiment. We're brought up on this idea that um, we get a list of equipment. You know, we you know, we get we have a list of equipment: tripod, Bunsen burner, gauze, all these things. hydrochloric acid test tubes. We got, and then we're going to go through this method. Uh, and it's uh, and uh, we're going to try this, and that's not going to work, and it's going to fail, or whatever. Um, we always get the right. We're always going to get. We're, we're going to. We have some. We're going to have a, a method. What do you call it? A method descri- instructions. We're going to have instructions, and and that's how we're kind of we we are. Um, uh, brought up that life. That ha- that's how things work. Yeah. Um, but it's not how things work in no. outside of a science lab. Yeah, no. So uh, one of my mentors describes this really easily. Um, 
He's like, so if we are, if we are trying to get out of a door by um, twisting the handle and pushing it outwards, mm -hmm. don't, but it actually opens inwards. Yeah. We're going to be there for a long time. Yeah. Don't when we have the inside. Things. Yeah. It's easy. Mm. So this is about insights. Yeah. What changes our world is insights. So when mm. when the um, uh, when I saw <laughs> that it wasn't my fault. Yeah. When I saw that the world would. When I saw that I that I was worrying about worrying and worrying about worrying wasn't doing me any good. Yeah. That's when I had a, like an insight and that took a bit of pressure off me. Mm -hmm. But I keep on falling for it. Yeah. But I don't beat myself up about it as much. So mm -hmm. there's only, for, for, for me, there's only actually one, there's only one thing that changes our world and that's insights. Yeah. Uh, and the podcast is about insights. That's yeah. what the Thriving Adoptees podcast is about. So mm -hmm. when I had a different perspective, so um, uh, so I'm going back 12 years ago, right? Uh, 14 years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to a woman. Uh, well, I went on this course. I went on a course. It was a communication course. And I had a big explosion of anger. And the, the woman that's running the course said to me, I think there's something there, Simon, if you ever want to come and talk about it. I'd be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, instead of saying, you're absolute, you know, and instead of saying, thank you, that's really kind of you. Yes, I'll mm -hmm. bear that in mind, which most people would probably say, you know, most yeah. middle class, we do the middle class lying thing, don't we, in the, in the mm -hmm. UK, where we don't tell anybody what we really think. Yeah. Um, so I could deal with that. That's very interesting. Yeah, thank you for that kind offer. Instead of, in, 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 instead of doing that, I was like, yeah, I'm curious. I'll I'll go and I'll come and see you and I'll mm -hmm. and we'll have this conversation. So I had this conversation this one. Um and then I'm telling her about the teddy bear and telling her about finding out that that my the teddy bear that I've had since I was as long as I can remember was from my birth mother. And and then I had this big explosion of anger towards mm -hmm. my birth mother, right? That she'd never had before. Yeah. I was 40. I'd never had that. And she said to me, so I said she didn't love me. There was lots of swearing, right? But um, uh, there was uh, she didn't love me enough to keep me. Uh, this is a consolation prize, and it wasn't like a like I'm expressing it here. It was like yeah, a, yeah. A, a, a meltdown, right? Yeah. And she she said to me just really gently, she said, "I'm the mum, Simon. I don't think it was. I don't think it was like that. Yeah. Right. So her perspective." Changed my perspective, yeah. and the, the 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 volcano that had erupted immediately stopped erupting. Mm -hmm. there, there was no more lava coming out. There was a little bit of perhaps a little bit of smoke, a little bit of yeah. white smoke yeah. coming out of the top of the because, like you know, but this the the, uh, the 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 volcano has now become dormant, right? Mm -hmm. So her insight, her point of view, changed my point of view. Yeah. But I went on the course because I was curious. Mm -hmm. When I had this anger on the on, on, on the course and she offered me the, the opportunity to have a chat, I was curious. When she and I stayed and I kept on following the insights, right? Yeah. So you you've done the same. Mm -hmm. You've got a, an email from a LinkedIn message off me out of the blue. Because I saw what you're doing, I thought this is this 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 Susie woman be a really interesting guest to have on the podcast to share her insights about to share her insights what she's learned, and then we've yeah. had something we're doing it in a slightly different format. So insights, the how is insights. Yeah, the how is insights, um, and 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 so so how do you have insights? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have insights um, by 
whatever doing whatever works best for you so whether that's uh, courses whether that's reading books whether that's podcasts whether that's having a coach whether that's just chatting to your friends whether that's chatting to the adoption agency whether it's chatting to other adoptive parents or all of those it's a combination of everything yeah. a combination of everything chat yeah. to me yeah for insight yeah. insight so that's it we gotta hang around out this way but the other thing is because like my insight has no impact on my 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 insight might sound like an interesting insight to you but it doesn't have the imp, same in, insight impact on you as it did on me because as i came up with this about 18 months or so ago i was very pleased with it i, I keep on talking about it there's no such thing as a second hand insight yeah right we have yeah. to have them for ourselves yeah so if i go back to the I, i'm practicing what i pre preach here i'm trying to do anyway right so the way that we teach kids mm -hmm. is by helping them to insights. Yes. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So they see it for themselves. Yeah. They see it for themselves. Yeah. Because they have to see this. Their, their world won't change until they see stuff for themselves. But that's got to be age appropriate and like all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. But what it, we, yeah. I was just going to say, it, it blows my mind because when at the moment we're just doing it based on when my eldest daughter asks questions and to her she asks the question she gets the answers and it it doesn't seem to bother her at all um you know it's just like asking about a, a birth mum and kind of I don't know whatever um what color hair she got or things like that and it's just cu curiosity for her whereas for me I'm kind of thinking goodness I know a lot more information about it and and but it, like you say, it's her having her insight into it is just, I want to know the information and then I'll go off and play. And if I want to ask some more questions, I will. Um, and it's trying not to put onto her anything that I'm so, thinking about it. So do you ever not answer her questions? No. Um, it, sometimes we might say if it's something that I don't have the answer to, um, she hasn't really ask any anything like that yet and um, because there are gaps in the information that we have um i would say i don't know the information but we'll try and find it out yeah i would i haven't and i would never say to her no i'm not answering that question because you wouldn't yeah. um it's her I, i'm kind of i don't really know how to say this but I, i've got the information to help her understand things so i've got no right to say to her no, no i'm not going to tell you that um yeah and the kinds so, of questions she asks at the moment aren't age inappropriate they're not kind of like why couldn't she look after me or anything like that so it hasn't got to the point where we've had to say um kind of simplify things um yeah so yeah i mean to to to, to be I, we want to be the, the thing that popped into my head, right? Was you know, I talked about therapists and stuff earlier on, right? So, when I was having a bit of a tough time a few years ago, I thought I'd go and see a therapist, right? And um, the therapist said, uh, Well, uh, I'm in uh, it, she had some really strange language, you know, like highfalutin, like, yeah, right. uh, hey, very posh lady. I, you know, I, it was in Harrogate. I, I don't think it would be, uh, I, I, you know. I'm involved in the adoption triad, but I don't think it would be, um, I don't think it would be uh, appropriate for me to share what those things are really. <laughs> she, she wasn't actually like that, but yeah. I just thought, I don't trust you woman. If you're expecting me, if you're expecting me, you've got to, leaders go first. Yeah. That's the yeah. whole point of leader. leaders go first. Leaders go first, they are first. They, they, the first that's what they go for and going first means sharing information yeah. <laughs> first being brave enough to share the information um and not saying i don't think it's appropriate you know you can't say well it's not appropriate for me to for me that you know, and then some people might say oh simon oh simon he's got trust issues you know mm -hmm. he wants to know he wants to know what therapist well uh, yeah okay if you really want to go down that route but doesn't seem like that to me if i'm gonna i want people to be open so you're being open with your daughter um i guess at what at some point you'll maybe you'll think 
uh, and, and answering these questions, maybe I'll just get out a bit more in front of the questions, or maybe I won't, or, but she's got to know that you can, um, she's got to know, she's got to trust you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that and means I'm answering questions, and so yeah. you're doing it. And that's, that's, that's what we want, is that they never feel that they can't ask yeah. a question about it, because that that's just, that's you know, why wouldn't you answer that? If you've that got is. the information and, and, and helping them, if they want the help there, to, to kind of understand and put all the pieces together. And this, there's this thing here, there's this thing here, there's um, that curiosity, um, is different for every adoptee. Yeah. Okay. So I never, I was never interested. Mm. Never. So yeah. if you try to foist, you wouldn't do this, but you know, like you, you've yeah. got to kind of meet, you got to meet the kids, kind of meet them where they're at, give them, the, yeah. but you've also got to be, I guess, flexible and kind of, I mean, you mentioned this, take, taking their lead. So if people were trying to, if my mum and dad had started trying to ask me questions about me questions, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not interested. Um, yeah. I'll I give you a flip of this. When, so my mum's really empathetic and, and pretty tuned in, in, into me. Um, but I can think of an example when she wasn't mm -hmm. and how I felt that. So I got, yeah. I, 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 uh, I ran across the road um, I was, I was walking back from school, I was 10. Uh, and I got, I, I didn't see this little van, that, you know, like a car van, you know, the tiny mm -hmm. thing, yeah. uh, come out of this side street and, and it knocked me over. Wow. And when I got, and so uh, I remember the, uh, I'd just been to the sweet shop and, you know, like we were having, I'd been saving up all my money to buy sweets mm -hmm. and pop and stuff on the last day of term, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember the, uh, the, uh, the bottle of pop going fizzing across the, uh, the road. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that gone. Um, and, but luckily my sweets are still intact. Anyway, so I got home and I said to mum that, you know, I had a bruise, I had a bruise on my leg because I, I was, yeah, I was, I was walking from the, to the bus stop to get bus home. So by the time I got home, half an hour later, whatever, the bruise was already forming where yeah. I'd hit the tarmac. And she, she said, she said, silly or something. What? I said to mum, I, oh, mum, I, um, I got, I got knocked down. I, and she said, oh, you silly thing or something like that. Hmm. And I thought, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. It, obviously, it's just her reaction in the moment. And yeah. I say, no, she's empathetic. But I felt a real disconnect with that at that mm -hmm. moment. I thought, what, yeah. why? You know, I'm still talking about it for, you know, oh, like, it, it's not, I'm not still talking about it. I'm talking about it to you. Yeah. I don't yeah. talk about it every day of the week. But it, it's yeah, a yeah. story that popped into my head when, so, like, we need to kind of meet them where they're at because if we're, if we're, you know, and that's a, that's not a, that's not a that's not a science. That's not a thing that I can tell you how to do. That's no, an no. art that you will that you are already already doing. So most mm -hmm. people who are trying to be parenting coaches or you know that sort of um, that or anybody or, or you know anybody trying to sell anybody anything, they'll say, oh, well, you need to know what I know." to uh, to 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 uh, to do what i do so you know there's a science to this yeah. so you know you pay me and i'll i mean no nah, you it's an art so you just, yeah. you just it is and i think i think that's the difficulty a lot of adoptive parents kind of feel that the training that you get is like you do it this way and at this point you do this and then at this point you do that and that isn't what real life's about and i could i'll always remember one of the reviews we had early on we happened to have the life story book on the settee because I hadn't tidied it away. Not because I was like leaving it there so that at half past two on an afternoon, we always go and talk about it. But that's the way that it was put in the- um, You've got to wait till, room. you've got to wait till quarter to three. Yeah, that's well, the, exactly. That's the right time. It, that and time. that's the way that it, it we're taught on the training and on all the discussions and everything is that it has to be at a, you know, at a certain point where it isn't, it's, it's like you say, it's what feels right for you and, and, and what feels right for your child and how they 
because if, if I sat her down every single week at half past two and said we're doing we're looking at this book she'd be like no we're not I'm not interested but when it interests her then she'll ask and then it's more likely to have a like it'll sink in and she then will have more questions about it because it's on her turn. No, 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 no. Half plus four. If you do it at <laughs> half plus four, that's going to yeah. work. Yeah. But not every week, every mm -hmm. fortnight. That's the that's the problem. I, th I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding you're doing here. Sorry, this is irony for anybody that doesn't yeah, get Simon's definitely. end irony, right? Okay. And I think that's that's where the, the training, and, and, and calling it training for how do you train to be a parent anyway, but... It, it's not oh, the, seven, really right. the seven simple steps. Don't you know them? Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you if you buy my book, it's only five quid. Yeah. If you buy my I'm book, I'll, I'll tell you the seven steps. Yeah. Um, uh, well, there, 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 are, there are only uh, there are only three, actually. Yeah. Uh, learn where happiness comes from. Uh, learn, learn how to um, help your kid. Yeah. Do that. Mm -hmm. and, and and learn uh, learn how to uh, learn how to um separate yourself from your story so i'm going to talk about that story thing because you you mentioned that earlier on right um you said something like uh, uh, uh being adopted is part of who we are uh, who they are i think yeah uh it depends how you mean by the what you mean by the who so uh, this gets a bit philosophical, a bit abstract. I can do. Um, adoption is something that happens to us. It's not who we are. Like being knocked, knocked down by that little van, that's something that happened to me. It's yeah. not who I am. Yeah. So I, on my Twitter thing and on my social media, I, I, I describe myself as um, adoptee, podcast, podcaster and trainer. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Sorry, yeah. podcaster and trainer. That's what I do. Yeah, I um, I do trainings, but what I do isn't who I am. Yeah. And I only use the the word adoptee so people know that I'm talking from lived experience. I have yeah. never described myself as an adoptee um, until nine months ago. Right. Wow. I would say uh, I was adopted mm -hmm. or I am adopted. You know, that's what I say. I used to say I am adopted. Mm -hmm. But who we are isn't what's happened to you. You, you are you are a mum. Yeah. Um, but you haven't always been a mum. So being a mum isn't essential part of who you are, as in it's not at the essence of who you are. Um mm -hmm. So we're not, the identity stuff is, can get a little bit tricky. Yeah. But, well, it, 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 it's, I don't know how to express it. The only way to express it is, um, is for me, is through uh, a, a, a metaphor. Uh, in, right. in this, in in this setting that we're finding ourselves in right here. So, for for the listeners, I'm holding up a, a small piece of glass that looks like it, that's shaped like a diamond. Yeah. That that's that's who we are when we're born little diamond this one was from amazon from about for about seven quid it's about an inch high two centimeters in new money i found a diamond at my mum's mm. house that I, she keeps on asking me for me back mm. a glass diamond but i won't give it to her back because this is more like about 
about 10, no, about 10 centimeters tall, about three inches tall. So, so um, it's a piece of glass that looks like a diamond and um, the, the sun is shining. We're not having a miserable day in, in Weatherby. Um, and we're having a sunny day. Uh, and uh, the, so the light is catching the, um, uh, and uh, the light is catching the, the glass and it's, and, it, and it's glistening and it's sparkly and it's, uh, it, it's perfect. And um, if it was, if it was a real diamond, I guess it would probably be worth about a billion pounds, but it's not yeah. as fast. So maybe, I don't know where we got it from, but mum got, mum got it from, but she's, unfortunately, she can't, she's not going to back because it's my favourite prop for my training. That's who we are. And then we go through life. And uh, as I say in the, in the States, poop, or as I say in, in England, SH1T happens like, Life's a contact sport. So yeah. in my case, I was relinquished. Ooh, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? I was relinquished and then I was adopted. Um, and some people might say, well, how, how was that? No, no, no. Well, that's just something that happened to me. That's, 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 that's a layer of, um, that's, a, that's a layer of something that we wouldn't want to happen. In the ideal world, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah. So some people might term that poop but that's something that happened to me it's a layer of poop on the diamond but um and then as i got a little bit uh, uh as i got a little bit older i didn't have any adoption trauma when i was a kid interesting because i'm sure you've heard a lot of stuff people talking about this yeah. i didn't have any i none whatsoever oh simon were you suppressing it doesn't feel that way i had a lot i had a lot of poop in my life from being bullied not being nothing to do with being adopted because i had buck teeth yeah why did you have buck teeth well because i sucked my thumb oh self-soothing oh well maybe but do non-adoptees sometimes suck their thumbs yes yeah. we're all looking we're looking for meaning yeah we're looking for a meaning and and we're looking for a meaning for our mood and we alight on things, and so so we alight. We 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 fixate. I fixated on business as the reason that I was not. I didn't feel I was good enough. And then I had a bit of adoption, ad adoption, an adoption reason for not feeling good enough. When I was forty, didn't hit me mm. till I was forty. Oh well, you suppressed it. Well, I didn't really feel that way. No, what happened was my life was going up and down, and it was fine. Your daughter's life, daughter's life are going up and fine. They're not bothered. <laughs> they, they recover. They they fall over. They they fall over. They get back up, and they're not bothered about it. We don't do the same as adults. So you've got all this. You've got this uh, being being I was being bullied, and you know uh, the girls I fancied didn't fancy me, or you know I didn't pass my driving test, or all these different things that happened, right? But they're all. That's all. That's all poop that's stuff that happened that's poop that happens to me but it happens to the diamond i'm the diamond but we've got this whole world that's obsessed with looking at the poop <laughs> looking at the sh1t because that's what we're trained oh look at your weaknesses yeah never mind your strengths let's look at what's got what's wrong in your life susie why did you come here what did you come here for um and um and that's that's how that's how we focus we focus on the the diamond stuff. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. But no, I've got to be trauma informed. We're trauma obsessed. Yeah. Definitely. Let's be hope obsessed. Yeah. So that's the identity piece. Yeah. So feelings, feelings come from thoughts. Most of the time we're not choosing how we think, how we feel, how we see ourselves. You know, it's the yeah. difference between um the ego and the diamond right yeah. so the diamond is perfect we go through stuff poop happens it, it hides the diamond and then we start to think that we smell so as yeah. one of my mentors say we put a layer of nail varnish on on the poop so that <laughs> nobody can see that we are poop yeah nobody can smell ourselves right yeah and and, and that's the ego but the ego is not who we are 
That's just a self-defense mechanism. Earth guy mm -hmm. only, as they say. Yeah. There's a lot of food for thought there. Uh, there's a huge amount. Of, and so we've been on for like an hour. Um, and, and I've been, I'm still, stu I still study this stuff like two hours a day. Right. Wow. Walking the dog. Yeah. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. And that's the great thing. Like, and, yeah. and as I, I often joke about this on the, on, on the podcast, right? So if we've got this far and you're still listening, listeners, mm -hmm. then yeah. you are curious. Yeah. Good. Good. Because if you're curious, you think that you haven't figured it all out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good. So you're in the learning place. You're putting yourself, you're hanging out at Wycle, you're hanging out at the bus stop for insights. And that's the right way to go. Well, yeah. Right. I think it's right because I'm still hanging out for insights. Mm -hmm. I still listen to podcasts. So what do you make of all that then? I think it's all, um, like I say, a lot of food for thought, and it's very refreshing hearing you talking like that um, and reassuring to me that just go with the flow and, and do what we're doing. Um, there isn't a right or wrong way of doing it. It's it's what works for us, um, and that's been really good. What hasn't made sense? I don't think anything hasn't made sense. Okay, good. I think it all has. It, it Like I said, a lot of it is kind of given me a lot to think about and, and how I go about things, yeah. which has been really good. What, what, what have you disagreed with? What, what's that? Um, I don't think necessarily that I do disagree with anything that you've said. Um, it's been a different way of thinking about things. Um, yeah. But yeah, and that's been really good. Well, yeah, and, and it's, it's turning everything on its head. Yeah, absolutely. But I only did that because I, I only turned everything in my head because everything that I thought was that I thought was going to make me happy is wrong. Yeah. So I had to turn it stuff on my head, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's been really good. Uh, yeah, good. Thanks for listening. And um, we'll see you all again soon. A, an experimental episode from the Thriving Adopters podcast. See you again soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs>